By traveling uh, to the field and visiting four projects, I really uh, got a sense about how the EU uh, delivers. I work as information correspondent, which means that I um, help um, communicate on how the EU development assistance brings impact and results um, in sub-Saharan Africa. My work is mainly based in Brussels, but every now and then I get to uh, travel to the African continent where I get the chance to visit projects and to contribute and participate in the uh, annual seminar of the press and information officers that took place in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. The main objective of this seminar is actually to share experiences, learn about best practices. So this is first of all a rare opportunity for uh, people involved in communication across the African continent to get to meet their colleagues and also to get to meet people from the headquarters. A lot of participants were very uh, excited and found that it was extremely useful and in some cases vital to, to, to have access to this network. And on top of that we learned about really interesting experiences across Africa. Day-to-day -day advice to PIOs working closely with the media is uh, to start off by saying everything is on the record um, and slowly developing a rapport with journalists um, and finding out which journalists uh, you can work closely with. The Press and Information Seminar also gave us the chance to meet the head of the EU delegation to Tanzania, Mr. Filiberto Seriani Sibergandi, and I actually got the chance to interview him. Actually, in the past 10 years, uh, Tanzania has had a growth rate of 7% of economic growth. And uh, this has been the result of many efforts by the Tanzanians themselves, by the policies that have been put in place in Tanzania, but certainly also by the support provided by donors, in particularly through the form of uh, budget support. The European Union is actually implementing a large number of projects in Tanzania, and I only got the chance to see a very, very few of them. After this long trip, we arrived in the area of uh, Iringa and we visited uh, for a, a whole day the Tea Research Institute of Tanzania, also known as TREAT. TREAT is a stakeholders-driven autonomous organization uh, set up to assist the, the Tanzanian tea sector through cost-effective um, uh, research and technology transfer. This plant has been instrumental in allowing young people to join tea production, to start their own farms, so that they can have a reliable source of income, which was the main target of this project. The same project has assisted us to reach more farmers in terms of training them, so that they can know the techniques of producing tea, and this has been very successful. We have covered over 60,000 smallholder farmers who have been directly contacted and, and taught about different topics of tea production. And that has helped them to be more productive and to know exactly how to grow tea. We have seen some impact caused by all this intervention, like families getting reliable source of income, people are now affording to send their children to school, uh, people building new houses and other direct benefit. We get a lot of satisfaction as researchers when we see the work we've done uh, transforms people's lives and uh, improves their livelihood. And to us, I think you no know, salary, nothing will give us satisfaction than seeing the farmers who are trying to help achieve the objective. I went to visit a water treatment plant that was funded uh, by the European Union in partnership uh, for the implementation with the Water Ministry. And what was very interesting in this, uh, in this visit is that I got the chance to see the source of water before. So this is a clear case of what was the situation before with much lower capacity in terms of uh, providing households with safe drinking water to uh, providing access to water to a larger uh, number of people. It also uh, provides water to very poor uh, households in uh, places called the water kiosks. Yeah. 
The third project was an education project which was taking place in a school uh, which welcomes both people who, who do not have any disability and children with disabilities. The EU has given a grant to Sense International for its program to support deaf-blind children in different units in 10 schools of Tanzania. So this is a main school in Dar es Salaam where we are supporting Sense International to get children into school, for them to receive basic education, to make sure that they continue to receive support when they go back home. We are also supporting the teachers through Sense International to get the appropriate training for uh, people uh, and children with special needs. And finally, we hope also that uh, through Sense International, uh, there is awareness throughout the country of the capabilities that uh, children with multiple disabilities have and what they can achieve with basic education and a very targeted training of teachers. We train these students who are deafblind. After sometimes they go back home with no hope at the family, with no support. So I'd like to think a bit further on how to facilitate the parents or the families to support these children when they go back home. Perhaps thinking of having a center where these children can now do things like handicrafts, sell the materials, and get some income for their families as well. I also had the chance to uh, see an energy project. The interesting thing was that there were two separate technologies. One was geared towards urban use and the other one was for the, the rural areas. But they are produced by the same company and the investor is actually a Dutch investor. So this is a clear case of uh, the EU investing uh, funds uh, in Africa and then uh, actually making a, a business and having an outreach. The local entrepreneur was telling us that already 200 devices had been ordered by the local farmers who are going to pay fully for the service and uh, who have actually saved money collectively to make sure that they are equipped uh, with this kind of device. So I thought that making this service available and helping farmers have actually the choice between using a, a non-renewable uh, energy or recycling their waste was a very interesting initiative, I thought. Going to the field is an investment, but I think there is a higher return on this investment. The projects may look simple on paper, but they are much more complex on reality. I was also very amazed, um, as usual I would say, with the ability of people to have a clear view about the problems they are facing and the solutions that they, that they can think of for these problems. And I thought that development assistance is much more about helping people to help themselves. 